Hello everyone. So my name is Pius and uh, I'm a senior data scientist. So so far we have understood about the whole process of the CDA. We have understood about like how we have to uh, build the data, how we have to prepare the data. Like uh, everything we have understood in terms of a theory knowledge. But what else uh, if we have to understand that in terms of a theoretical apart from theoretical in terms of a practical manner as well. So this EDA. Firstly, before jumping to the practical part, I would like to tell you that what is this EDA actually, right? Uh, in a more specific manner. So this EDA is nothing but to prepare our data, to understand about the data, to feel the data. If you are able to feel the data, right? What data is telling with you? That means uh, most of the part is already cleared. Most of the part you already solved. So we have to play with the data. We have to understand the data in a, a proper manner. like what data is saying what i want to say with the data why i am preparing this data why this column is there why this value is there why if we have a missing value why this missing value is here if this missing value is here then uh, like just because of which reason that missing value is here if there is any outlier then how it can possible why outlier is there there so many questions we have to ask while preparing the data so uh, like whenever uh, we are going to be a part of any project or any product this eda part and the data pre processing part is actually taking a uh, 40 to 60% of time of your entire project if your project is of four weeks so this eda data pre processing data processing everything will take around 2 uh, to 3 weeks because uh, like once we have uh, refined data once we have done with the uh, once we have done with the uh, like insights uh, from the data once we got the insights from the data once we have done with the refinement of the data then most of the part is very simple we just need to call the models we just need to uh, like call the uh, these algorithms and we have to make some kind of uh, we have to do some kind of fiber parameter tuning then we just we can directly deploy it So today I'll focus on very important part which is our EDA. So I'll quickly share my screen and then we'll move to what exactly we have to learn and what else we have learned so far. Okay. So we have covered so far three kind of analysis uh, for the EDA. One is univariate analysis, bivariate analysis and the multivariate analysis. Uh so today we will cover the graphical manner of the EDA, right? Like how to do this EDA, how to do this univariate analysis, how to do this uh bivariate analysis and the multivariate analysis on a uh, new data. So before jumping to this uh, data part and all I would like to tell some uh, some quick ideas of or like a quick uh, refreshment of uh, this univariate uh, bivariate and multivariate so a univariate univariate means like uh, we have to plot a single variable at the same time at a uh, at a time right so for we have a various kind of plot for the same we have a bar plot we have a line chart we have a area chart and we have a histogram as well So whenever I want to insight, I want to find the insights. I want to analyze my single variable. At that time, I can directly use these uh, these charts. Either I can utilize the bar chart, line chart, area chart, histogram. Again, these charts are again based on the data to data. Like what kind of data we have? Do we have a continuous data? Do we have a categorical data? Do we have a time series data? Do we have a discrete manner data? All these stuff we have to focus. So a bar chart is nothing but it's a chart or a graph that represent the categorical data with rectangular by bars. So here it actually able to create a rectangular bars, right, with the height and length proportion. So these bars can be plotted either vertically we can plot else we can plot in a horizontal manner as well. A vertical bar chart is sometimes called as a column chart and a bar chart shows comparison among the discrete kind of categories. So a bar chart is very simple. It's a, a data representation in terms of a rectangular bars. Now line chart, line chart is again like it's a line plot or a line graph or a curve kind of chart, right? Where we display the information as a series of data pointers called as markers, uh, connected by a straight line, right? So one line is there, and based on that, all the data pointers are actually connected. it's basic type of uh, common chart uh, which used in a many of the fields like maybe it's a time series data maybe a continuous kind of data at that time we can easily use this kind of chart 
then the area chart like where we basically uh, try to understand the area under that curve, area uh, which covered by that graph something like that right it combines a line chart and the bar chart it's a combination of both then we have a histogram histogram is again an appropriate representation of the distribution of the numeric data right whenever we have a continuous kind of data and we have to focus on the distribution of the data at that time we can go and we can utilize a histogram Sometimes we have a distribution plot as well, which is also known as dist plot. Uh, that is also an appropriate graph for a distribution plot. Uh, this distribution plot will give you the exact distribution that do we have a normal kind of distribution, Poisson distribution, or a different different kind of distribution. Well, if we use a histogram, so that will give us a distribution based on the uh, some kind of bars. So this is a simple uh, introduction of the univariate analysis. Uh, today we will uh, discuss a uh, uh, univariate analysis by weight, multivariate in a detailed manner. We will understand how, how can we plot these all graphs. Then the second is by weight analysis. So we can make uh, some scatter kind of plot, right? So this is scatter plot. Like whenever we have a two variable, uh, we have a x dimension, we have a y dimension. Whenever we have a two variable, and I want to make uh, some comparison kind of between two variables, how they are distributing uh, based on the time, based on some other variables, how one variable is distributing based on the other variable, how one variable is scattered based on the other variable. That kind of information, if I would like to know, at that time we can use uh, a by variate analysis. So here we have a scatter plot, we have a hex plot, hexagon plot, or we have a bi bivariate line chart as well. So if I'll talk uh, of first one, a scatter plot. So a scatter plot is a type of a plot or mathematical diagram which use the Cartesian coordinate to display the values for a typically two variables for a set of uh, data. Like we can take a one variable in the x dimension, one variable in the di y dimension, and based on the continuous variables, we will plot the uh, distribution or a scatteredness of the data. Then we have a hex plot. Hex, I'm not going to uh, go in the D because we already covered all this part in a theoretical manner. I'm just giving you a uh, like a quick idea of all this plot because we are going to use or utilize this plot in a, a today's practical session. Then we have a hex plot, hexagonal uh, binning plot density is there, right? So rather than focusing on the pointers, we basically focus on the density here. And points are, are bent into a graded uh, kind of hexagon. And the distribution. So distribution is nothing, the number of the pointers per hexagon is actually creating, right? And that is going to be displayed using either the color or the area of the hexagon. So where we have to focus on the distribution, right? Again, we, we will jump. Uh, we will go with this hexagon kind of plot. Then we have a stacked bar chart, right? Whenever we have a multiple categories, uh, uh, kind of stuff, right? We can we can stack the one bar chart on the top of the another bar chart. So this is a special kind of bar chart which uses to show comparison between the categories of the data, but with ability to break down and compare parts of a whole whole data. Then we have a by weight line chart where we have to compare our two lines. So it's a much more interpretable because uh, the lines themselves don't take much space. And that is a very uh, like a simple kind of uh, information as well. So their values remains uh, readable and we can place uh, multiple lines side by side. Then the last one, uh, which is actually a multi weight analysis. Here we can make a heat map, group pro uh, box plot, pair plot, and the parallel coordinates kind of stuff. So a uh, multi weight. Whenever uh, I would like to make a graph, a uh, appropriate graph for all the variables at uh, one time, right? At that time, we can utilize this multi weight analysis. So here we have a, a heat map, heat map which actually help us to understand the correlation uh, between the variables, correlation between the multiple variables with the covariates uh, or with the target variable maybe. So it's a correlation plot simply. Then we have a pair plot. It is actually a combination of the multiple plot and based on the data, it will give us the uh, plots. Like if we have a continuous kind of data, it will give us a distributed plot. If uh, this data is actually a categorical nature, then uh, this plot will give us, give, you, give us a bar plot. So uh, we have understood about all this plot, right? Now we have to focus on uh, uh, the practical how can we do the practical of all these plot? So like uh, once, uh, uh, like for this EDA part, firstly, we have to import some of the packages, right? So some of the most important packages, which we have to import every time, that is uh, Cbon, uh, because anyhow, we have to require this Cbon for the uh, for the graph purpose. Then similarly, we have to plot, uh, use some plot lib. 
mat plot uh, a lib dot pi plot is there uh, that we can import as a plt then we have to import anyhow a panda send a numpy because anyhow we are going to use our data frame and the numpy arrays then uh, we also need to uh, we can also import our matplotlib as well matplotlib uh, separately also we have as uh, so, yeah, uh, i think that there's no requirement because we already yeah so firstly i'm just importing my all the packages so once uh, this uh, uh, import is done then we'll uh, focus on the second part where we will try to load the data right so i'm just restarting my kernel because i don't know why it is taking a lot of time it generally don't need to take a lot of time mm. so my kernel is restarting okay so my import is done so i'm i'm okay like what are the necessary libraries or necessary packages i required that i'm able to import now now the next step we have to import the data so importing the data is again imp uh, important but before jumping to the data point i would like to tell key what else uh, present inside the data so our data this is a hard data right where hard disease data a categorical kind of data right where we have a multiple columns like what is the cholesterol level what is the age of the patient we have a gender of the patient so all these uh, important features we have so i'll quickly import my data uh, first then i will uh, focus on this part so whenever we have to import our data so our data can be in a different format data can be in a csv format comma separate is uh, data can be in a excel format data can be a tsv format data can be in a json format so we can change uh, this uh, uh, this API. So PD, like I'm just calling a pandas, then I'm just uh, calling this read underscore CSV. And here uh, I need to tell, or I need to give my uh, data name, that's it. So uh, this is my data. Like if I want to check my, okay. So here I'm just loading my data and uh, uh, PD is not defined. Okay, okay. I have forgotten to provide the, you know, names here np okay okay so my data is able uh, like i'm able to uh, load my data now i can uh, i need to check how my data looks like so firstly i need to i can print my head or uh, five uh, at least five records so i'm just checking key how my data looks like so here in my data we have uh, these many columns we have a age column we have a gender column we have a, a cholesterol column and we have a different different columns so to understand about all these columns we have to understand about the uh, data dictionary first how this data dictionary actually look like or what else uh, present inside this data right so uh, i have categorized this data into uh, like uh, some of the categories like uh, uh, what is the numeric column what is the categorical column what is the continuous column so that we have categorized right so there here i'm just uh, pasting all this stuff so we have a binary column uh, so inside binary column we have a gender we have a two uh, two records are there two types of uh, unique records are there zero for the female and one for a male then we have a fps F fps is again also binary kind of uh, data where we have only two possible outcomes are there uh, so the full form of this fps is actually a fasting blood sugar and uh, that must be more than 120 uh, mg per dl if that is more than 120 mg per dl then value is going to be one if that is less than 120 mg per dl that means the value should be zero uh, in, in this column and then we have an exchange which is nothing but exercise uh, induced angina zero for the no and one for the yes so these are the binary binary kind of column or uh, binary kind of data we have then we have a categorical column so inside categorical column again we have a multiple columns are there cp cp for the chest pain again inside cp we have a multiple categories like zero one two and three zero for as uh, as some um, matic angina then a typical angina for one, non angina for two, and a typical angina for three. Then we have a rest, uh, rest egg CG, which is again going to be a multi class kind of data that is known as a resting ECG, where zero for a left uh, ventricular hypertrophy, one for normal, and two for STD. Then we have a slope. Slope is again going to be a categorical data, slope of the peak exercise ST segment. Again, we have a three categories are there, flat, down, sloping, and the up sloping. Then we have a THL, 
thallium uh, stress test st status or uh, the result again we have a multiple categories are there then we have a ordinal data where we have a order of the things like a uh, number of the major vessel is there where uh, inside which uh, we have orders like uh, colored by a uh, fluoroscopy then we have a uh, numeric columns so these numeric columns are actually we have a uh, multiple numeric columns are there like we have a uh, age where uh, that is a uh, uh, like uh, age of the patient then we have a cholesterol level we have a uh, 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 thalage maximum heart rate achieved uh, during thallium then we have a target column which is actually at zero and one and uh, this we have to predict uh, uh, with the help of the body but today we will focus on the idea part so this is my data dictionary so we have to understand about uh, each and every column why it is important because uh, uh, if we understood about uh, if we are able to understand each and every bits and pieces of the data then it is uh, e it is going to be an easy job uh, for us to uh, manipulate the data or uh, do the analysis kind of stuff. So, uh, okay. So, so far we have done with the data loading. We have done with the data, um, like uh, we have checked with the data. Now we have to check uh, key what is the shape of the data? Like uh, what is the size of my data? So we can easily check shape and size of the data. So inside this data, we have a 303 uh, records are there and we have a 14 total columns. So if I want to print it into a column and record manner, so zero is going to make a number of records and I can uh, use one for my number of columns. Now, uh, we have to check key, uh, which column is actually a numeric in nature. Okay, from this uh, data dictionary, we understood key, these should be uh, numeric in nature, these should be categorical in nature. Now we have to check with the help of Python coding. So we can directly apply our data.info. And with the help of this, we can check key, like which column is actually of which data type. So here we are able to see key age is a column name and it is actually an integer 64. Integer 64, that means it is uh, uh, filling as a numeric in, uh, in this uh, data, right? So sex or gender column is actually also filled with integer 64. CP is also filled with integer 64. And we have total 303 non-null values. So this no null value that also we are able to understand here. And we have uh, with the help of these kind of data types, uh, we have filled the, with these values. But again, there's one point about uh, we can understand from here. Like sometimes uh, somebody, if somebody is here who is uh, loading, uh, who is actually taking care of the data or maybe are saving the data or maybe are collecting our data by mistakenly, he he actually used the uh, integer or a numeric, right? But it, uh, sometimes uh, some uh, some column values would be have in terms of a categorical in nature. So uh, sometimes we have to change the categories or sometimes we have to change the data types as well. So now we can check uh, data description as well. We can check the data description key how this data actually describe. So data dot describe. So here we will get a description of the data like description of all the numeric uh, uh, variables. So what else we can understand from here? We can understand key what is the total number of count uh, present in the data, like size of the data. What is the mean of all the values? Like if we have uh, one, two, three, four, five values present in, in the data, so what is the mean of that data, right? One plus two plus three plus four plus five divided by five. So we have a mean of the data or average value of the, all these columns. Then we have a standard deviation how your uh, how your data is distributed around the main then we have uh, what is the minimum value present inside that data what is the maximum value present inside that data what is the 25 percent of overall data right what uh, is the suitable value for 25 percent of your overall data what is the 50th uh, value and what is the 75th percent value right all these kind of information we can get from here so like we can understand we can uh, understand we like do we have a uh, which kind of uh, distribution we have in the data do we have a correct data or something like that we can describe that we can understand from here now if sometimes if you want to like uh, describe only a single column as well so you can describe you can firstly use the data then you can uh, call your specific column then also you can uh, call this describe to describe a specific column as well so i'm just using here age column and based on each column, I'm just describing key, what is my count of uh, values, what is my mean of values, what is my standard deviation, mean values and all. Now, if we have to check them, how many number, uh, what is the, uh, like how many number of columns we have or what are the names of my columns? So we can actually check data.column and that will give us our column names. 
now if if you want to like uh, if you want to change some of the column names right maybe i want uh, i like to change some of the column names or maybe some of the uh, column values as well so that i can also do that now let's say uh, i want to change the name of uh, my uh, gender right so for that what we can do we have to call this rename then inside rename we have to tell key this is my column then we have to pass as a dictionary here we have to provide an earlier version of the name so uh, sex is the earlier version of the name and i want to change this with a gender actually okay and uh, we have to do the in place equal to true so that we will save these so uh, changes then here again i can check my top five so you are able to see key earlier we have a uh, sex but uh, right now it is converting to a gender okay so these are the uh, these are the way to change the name as well and if uh, uh, sometimes we can also change the values right like let's say this is my target variable and uh, for this or maybe uh, okay here we have a gender inside gender one is female actually uh, sorry one is male and zero is female so now we will try to convert uh, this values with the categories right so uh, we will check here how can we do that so if i want to change the gender into categories categories so how can we do that firstly we have to call the uh key we require gender okay then inside gender we have to call this uh, gender equal to equal to zero because this we have to change so if you will uh, check this so it will give you the all the uh, records where we have a zero values right it is actually it's it's kind of a filtering condition right we are just passing a filtering condition where it will filter out all the data which is having a zero values and then i am just uh, uh, assigning this as a female similarly i'll do for a male as well like i'll follow the same thing here rather than taking a zero value i'll take a one value here and i will assign a male here okay now if i'll check our data new data so so here uh, we are able to see that ki earlier we have a one but now it is converted as male so if sometimes uh, we have to make some kind of manipulation as well uh, in the data right we have to change our, our data type we have to change our, our categories that also we can do so that's why here we have converted to one into male and uh, zero into female okay now uh, we will start plotting the data right so firstly we will start with a categorical versus quantitative plot right uh, we will start with a, a bar plot kind of stuff right where we will showing the gender and the target variable so i'll i start with a uh, this uh, uh, this kind of information of, of firstly i'll start with a bar plot here so sns dot bar Okay, before that, I'll give you the introduction of all this stuff, right? Like uh, what kind of uh, plot we are going to plot. So firstly, we will uh, make a plot between a categorical versus quantitative. So we have a category, some, some of the categorical variables which we are already aware. Okay, like we have uh, these all categorical variables we have. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, yeah. these are the categorical variables and these are the numeric variables we have like we have a chest pain or we have a, a gender a blood sugar rest ecg these are the categorical columns we have right so now if i'll start uh, plotting uh one by one like uh, firstly i'll start with a multi uh, bivariate analysis here right where we will target to plot a ca one categorical column we will take at a time with one quantitative column so I'm just taking here, I'm just uh, like SNS dot bar plot. We have to call bar plot. And then we have to pass here any uh, column, data with column. Uh, data dot this. So this will give you the bar plot of uh, the categories. But here we can take a... Oh, okay. So rather than taking a single column, we will take a multiple column so that we can get a better insights. So, okay. Now we have to 
whenever we have to plot uh, this bar plot for our two uh, uh, two variables at a time firstly we have to pass the data the name of the data data equal to data data is my parameter and the name of data is actually data then we have to pass key what else we have to take in the x di uh, direction so i'm taking a gender in the x direction and i'm taking y uh, like uh, my target variable in the y direction and here i'm just uh, telling key palette uh, we have to change the palette as well palette should be pl okay uh, so but again we have to define our pal so how can we define that okay, like uh, we have to define pal equal to uh, so here we are saying ki male should be with a uh, specific color and what is that color we can define any color like a uh, sff 9999 and i want to upload my female with a different color which is actually uh, 663ff so these kind of uh, things you will get from the net you don't need to worry about that uh could not generate a palette for map okay so maybe these uh, uh pointers all uh also changed uh, i think uh, okay so we will not use this plot and we will go with a uh, default version of the colors okay so these are the two uh, these are the uh, graph this is the graph we got where we have a comparison between the gender and the target right and here we can say that like uh, most of the female are having a uh, this heart disease okay because count of the female is higher than the count of the male so generally female is having a uh, this heart disease rather than having a uh, male so that's why we have a target column uh, in the y variable y dimension and uh, gender column in the x dimension and here we can also if we want to uh, print the uh, percentages of female versus male her diseases as well so we can also like here we are not able to see any kind of percentages right but if i want to check the percentages as well then we can also uh, use a value underscore count and if we can check the percentages as well so that is also important uh, that is also we can do that so i'll uh, quickly tell you how can we do that so for doing that we can uh, utilize uh, this part okay no need of this spell we have to change gender here we have to change gender here because we have renamed this gender already and here we are able to see that key the percentages of female is actually a 25 percent whereas the percentage of male uh heart disease is actually 44 percent and how we did that we just filter out the female only and then we are taking a, a value underscore count and then uh, uh, from value underscore count we got a, a value counts value and then we are taking a, a, a like a one and then we are multiplying by 100 right if you want to take if you want to understand this in a deeper manner so how can do that we can take a step by step process again so firstly we are filtering out the female data then after that i am just taking out a, a value underscore count dot value underscore counts so it will give us a value count right okay, how many is one is there for target and how many zero are there for target then i am going to normalize it uh, which is again not required so here we have to focus on zero only uh, sorry one only so that is 72 and then i am going to multiply with 100 so that is going to be 75 right now uh, we can also normalize it so that we can get a normalized kind of output so normalize equal to true uh, so it is going to be normalize your output then here i'm just going to multiply with the 100 so it will become a 75 so the same thing we are uh, getting here right now the next which uh, the next what you can uh, say or what we can uh, check we can check uh, we can create a bar chart for checking the both target versus gender and we can write some kind of observations so how can we do that we have to like uh, uh, we have we can also apply some kind of grouping kind of condition as well so for grouping uh, i'll filter out my data i'll filter out uh, two columns actually gender and the target first that means other than taking my whole data i'm just taking only two column data okay and after that uh, we can group out 
we can make a group of we we can uh, apply a grouping condition group by here we can grouping uh, based on the gender so it will create a uh, pandas object kind of stuff then we can calculate the mean values of all right so here we are able to get the mean values at the same manner so this is also a different way to calculate this now if i want to plot this again so we can plot it uh, plot dot bar because here we have to plot bar chart and then if you want to uh, provide some kind of uh, uh, colors then you can also provide otherwise it will give you a, a blue color only so this is a way like uh, we can uh, do otherwise uh, yeah so this is a second alternative now if you want to uh, increase the size of the uh, graph as well that is also uh, possible so for that what we have to do we have to just uh, uh, do this stuff f and ax plt dot subplots like if i want to make a multiple plots at the same time so we can do that as well like uh, i want to make a um, multiple plots at one time and with the height uh, s1 and with s2 and we can also define the uh, size of the figure as well so here i'm taking a figure size as uh, 10 comma 5 right so all the uh, pictures must be equal to a 10 comma 5 kind of stuff so this is my first plot which i'm creating okay so then we have to create a second plot like um, uh, where we can plot up uh, uh, okay we can also provide some kind of uh, axis as well here if you want to uh, give so here we can provide our axis ax equal to ax uh, zero like uh, this is my first graph okay then uh, we are uh, we can also provide some kind of naming to the axis as well so ax zero for we are providing a name or we are setting the title as uh, target versus uh, gender okay so this is the name also we have set it for the axis equal to zero now the second plot also we can create here like so here we are using a count plot that is also a one alternative for uh, this value underscore count like we are going to create a same kind of plot here inside count plot uh inside count plot so the name of count plot is actually this like count plot we have to say then we have to take a gender first then after that we have to power we can pass a hue as well inside hue we can uh pass a target variable because we are actually making uh this graph by focusing on the target then we can pass a data equal to data that means we have to pass the data then here i am just giving key this graph i must uh create at the x is equal to one okay so here we got uh, some comparison kind of stuff key this uh we have a total mail and out of total mail generally zero uh generally mail are healthy whereas so uh, one percent mail are having a uh, uh, this number of male are having a uh, disease her disease but in terms of a female most of the female are having a disease her disease rather than healthy we can also give our name here like access one we can set our title Sorry, it's uh, access. Gender versus hurt versus non hurt. Okay, so this is my access uh, uh, one ka, uh, title like gender versus hurt and versus non hurt. GRTH. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry for my spelling mistake. So, here, yeah, we have two graphs target versus gender and gender versus hurt versus non hurt. So, here we have a comparison between hurt, uh, gender is having a hurt disease or gender is not having a hurt disease kind of stuff. Okay. So uh, we can we can figure out some kind of insights out of uh, uh, by plotting these kind of graphs, right? So th the important part is that ki how we are plotting all this stuff. Okay. So now we will try to create a bar plot for checking the both number of people having a chest pain versus uh, chest pain type, right? So her disease 
uh, the person is having a chest pain that person is having a heart disease or not and we will try to write some kind of observations but from this graph we got observation that key most of the female having a heart disease uh, in comparison between the uh, male so here we have to focus yeah in the next scenario we have to focus on the chest pain right so we have a chest pain column with us we have a ch uh, chest pain column we have a cp column so we have to make a plot between this and the target this okay so for that uh, we have to firstly take a chest pain data only cp data cp data we have uh just a second okay yeah the name was say uh, the name was correct right i i thought ki uh, we have a different name for the chest pain all right so firstly we have to check the value underscore count so that uh, we can figure out the what is the value under uh, uh, different uh, counts values for a different different kind of categories here so we have a total four categories are there 0 1 2 and 3 and for 0 we have a most of the counts are there now uh, i can make a plot of uh, these values as well a uh, plot uh, dot bar we have to make a bar plot and you can also provide a colors combination as i said and uh, you can also give a axis as well but before giving the axis we have to create uh, the same stuff right we have to provide a figure size and we have to say keep we are going to create a two plot at least here so two uh, two figures we are going to create and uh, we will give a axis as well here so first axis is actually uh, uh, like axis one yes zero okay so this gave us like a zero two one and three uh, so it gave us a, a bar plot kind of stuff right for all all these uh, all the uh, four available categories now in the second manner again we will create uh, some kind of count plot right where we will try to check key uh, how this data is distributed based on the uh, gender or based on the target right not a gender based on the target so sns dot count plot cp is my main column which we have to focus then we have to pass a hue equal to target because based on the target variable i want i would like to make the plot then we have to pass the data data equal to data and we have to uh, pass the axis like which on which axis we are planning to make it so again yeah so based on the cp based on the chest pain uh so most of the person who is having a chest pain uh the most of the person who is having a second category of chest pain right what is the second category of chest pain that we have to understood first if we have a chest pain second category that means non-angina most of the person whenever they have a non-angina kind of chest pain they are supposed to have a uh, uh this heart disease mostly that is a general kind of pattern right whereas most of the person which is having a zero kind of chest pain which is uh, seems like what which is actually a asymptotic angina so whenever a person is having a uh, asymptotic uh, angina chest pain at that time the person is not having a uh, much chances of heart disease whereas if a person is having a non-angina kind of heart uh, chest pain at that time there's a probability of possibility of uh, most of the people is having a heart disease similarly if you want to make uh, this based on the female and all right like uh, let's say if you want to check so i'll give you key we have to create a three subplot okay and the third count plot i want to make between the gender and the cp Okay. Sorry. Okay, okay. Got it.
so uh, now i'll uh, remove this part and uh, just because of some uh, subplot constraint it is not able to create a subplot for uh, both at a time so here we are just uh, segregating here we are just checking ki, uh, which kind of chest pain is happening in which gender right like so generally this uh, zero chest pain this asymptotic angina chest pain mostly occurred in a male but uh, this second kind of chest pain which is non angina that uh, that is having a similar kind of distribution that is having a same kind of uh, pattern right uh, like most of in most of the people that is uh, having right there's no uh, specific segregation specific uh, distance or difference between the male and the female okay so this kind of observation we can uh, figure it out then uh, the then the next plot which we would like to make uh, that is a boiling plot right so here we will try to focus on the boiling plot where we will check the fasting blood sugar and the age versus the target and we will try to figure out the observations so for that again we have to fix the figure size firstly we have to uh, like again we are going to plot a subplot so using the same code Here uh, we have a freedom to change the values as well. Like uh, we, if we want to make some uh, bigger kind of plot, that also we can do that. Now for plotting the violin plot, we can utilize uh, uh, this code violin plot, and here we can take a fast uh, fasting blood sugar uh, column. So where we have a fasting blood sugar column. Fasting blood sugar. Yeah, FPS. Okay. So here we will use our FPS, fasting blood sugar first then we have to take a second column which is actually our age column we have then we have to pass target as uh, because we have to focus on the target then we can pass a data equal to data okay and we can also uh, provide a split equal to true in order to split the data split uh, these graphs kind of stuff like then we have to pass access like in which access i want to make this graph so here we are able to see that like uh, we have we have passed fps uh, in the x dimension and h in the y dimension right and uh, based on the target we uh, actually provide a hue as our target value right so here we are able to see that key like uh, fasting blood sugar having uh, this kind of distribution and uh, for a range values between uh, 20 to 80 right well so um, uh, the, uh, the male is having uh, this kind of distribution whereas the female is having uh, this kind of distribution for this kind of age right so uh, that kind of plot we can uh, plot it here now if we have to plot it based on the gender age and all that also we can do so in the second subplot I will make it uh, for a gender and all rather than focusing on the we will focus on the gender okay yeah this gender uh yeah okay we have to provide one here okay so here we are able to see that key like uh, for the age for the age between 20 to 80 we for the male male we have a uh, this kind of distribution for a zero category this kind of distribution for a person who don't have a heart disease and this kind of distribution for a person who is having a heart disease that kind of plot we can plot right so here we we got some observation that male has have the high chances of getting the heart disease whereas female have a uh, less chances of uh, having a heart disease and female have uh, age at uh, 25 to 90 they are getting heart disease mostly right because uh, the distribution the peak is uh, higher at that time only then we can create uh, some box plot for age and the gender as well and we can write some kind of uh, observation we can create uh, some kind of strip plot as well right that also we can create if uh, we have to make a strip plot a strip plot so we have to pass x and y variables here x gender 
and y we have to pass as age here then we have to provide a data equal to data then we can pass here jitter these jitters and all these are the parameters present inside the uh, uh, documentation you can use but you don't need to worry about all this stuff we have to understand when to use so uh, which kind of graph and how can we interpret those kind of graph that is important right so this strip plot will give you actually a distribution of the data the spreadness of the data uh, uh, in comparison between our two kind of variables right so here we have our gender and the age so based on the age we can say key most of the data uh, we have uh, around a 50 to 60 uh, age variable for the male right and uh, whereas for the female we have a very few data pointers for our age between a 30 to 40 and similarly for a 70 above but for a age between the range of 50 to 70 we have a, so many people are there so many a female are there so this strip plot actually showing the spread uh, of the age based on the gender right and we can show key there we have a uh, no outliers because most of the distribution most of the values are close to the mean or near about the overall pattern so so far we have created a uh, various plot for a uh, continuous versus a categorical data now what if we have a categorical versus a categorical data at that time we can also make some kind of plot right so for that we have to create a, a like cross step kind of stuff right we have to create a one table kind of stuff and then based on that we can uh, make some kind of plot right so that how can we do that for doing that we have to uh, make a cross step first and uh, uh, then we can make a stacked bar chart kind of stuff so how can we do that like uh, we have to uh, we have to firstly create a cross tab based on the data where we have to utilize our gender and the target column and then uh, then we can create a uh, some stacked bar chart so here we we, we have uh, this kind of bar chart right like uh, based on the percentages distribution we got this kind of stacked bar chart right where we can say that key uh, this is uh, somehow expected since it explained the difference between the uh, female and the male so from here we can we can see or we can check the issues of the uh, male female uh, values based on the percentages so whenever we have a quantitative uh, qualitative versus qualitative or a categorical versus categorical data that cross tab is a one option which we can utilize in order to make some kind of a stack bar chart in order to understand the different different kind of uh, stackness of the data or uh, distribution of the data right so here we are able to see that in the same so we have understood uh, quantitative versus qualitative we have understood about qualitative versus qualitative and then the third is actually a quantitative versus quantitative whenever we have a both are continuous data right so here quantitative versus quantitative that means numeric versus numeric and here we uh, we understood about categorical versus categorical and so far we have understood about categorical versus numeric now for numeric versus numeric what we can prepare we can make a scatter plot so for a scatter plot we have a we have to call a plt then we can use uh, two columns like age is there sorry age is there then we have a uh, any continuous data we can pick st depression we can pick a uh, maybe a old peak i think we have to check key which is our uh, numeric column so we have a old peak it's a uh, numeric column is there right so we will try to create a old peak oh data okay it's a data okay so this kind of scatter plot we got we like how data is scattered uh, based on these two columns so here we can get a scatteredness of the data uh, based on the age and the old peak column right like on the x column we have uh, age and on the uh, uh, y column we have old peak so today we have understood about uh, three kind of graph right like categorical versus numeric 
nomadic versus nomadic and categorical versus categorical so with the help of these graph we can figure out some kind of observation we can write some kind of observation we can check uh, we can apply a group by we can uh, create a cross tab we can check the information of the data we can uh, check the dis uh, disuse of the data we can check our dis uh, disk we can also describe the data that also we all these stuff we have understood today so we'll try to cover uh, rest of the part in the upcoming uh, session so thank you so much for uh, joining today's session and um, bye bye